Good afternoon. A little bit different in here. Buick's not sitting in that spot. Got the El Camino over there now just because. Got the Buick sitting over here. Did drive it around quite a bit. I think that was Sunday. And uh, you know, really no problems. So that was cool. Couple little things. I see my light just went out, so I don't know what the hell's going on there. There we go. Uh, belts came loose, which I kind of figured. New belts and paint on the pulleys and all that stuff, so gotta tighten them up. They're squealing a little. One thing I did notice, and I noticed right after I fired it up, you'd be watching the side of the rocker covers here. And he would just move a little itty bitty bit. And I thought maybe it was just, you know, reflection or whatever. I didn't pay much attention to it. And then later on, I walked over to one and kind of held my hand on it. It's like, nope, they're moving. So I'm guessing the roller rockers we used are just hitting the side of these Chinese valve covers. So I got to take these off and just kind of flex the steel out a little bit because they don't move a lot. I mean it's just every little bit. You'll see them just I thought it was kind of funny actually. So I gotta do that. Uh, what else did I have to do? Well, I gotta adjust the fan so that comes and goes like it's supposed to. I gotta read the directions on that. Uh, throttle return spring. I get the other one on there. Brake spring, I gotta put a return spring on that because the brake lights will stay on once you shut the car off. And if you get your foot in the brake, the 40 does that too every once in a while. Resecured the mirror because that fell off. <laughs> all in all, though, she did ride out pretty nice. A couple little things, you know, like I said, but considering had this car completely apart. I gotta put a screw in here because that's that moves. I think there's a little dimples in here and that fell out, so I have to get a screw fished in there and tighten that up. But that's about it. Oh, and it starts out in second gear. I noticed that right off the bat. But the little bugger's got enough power and good enough gear ratio where it starts out pretty good in second gear. So once it goes to actually starting out in first gear, it's going to be quite a tire flamer. But I didn't do the transmission, so I'm not too worried about that. And the transmission people that did it, they want it back anyway so they can, you know, tune it in, they said. I'm not really sure what that means. Most of the trainees I rebuild, you just put them in and away you go. So they'll have to figure that out. And then... We'll get it aligned. Right now I just got it kind of close. It goes down the road straight, but it needs to be better. I got to paint up the spots in the bumper bracket. My goal, and this is my goal, is to have it to him next Monday. Uh, like I said, there is a lot to do, so I shouldn't have too much trouble getting it all done. The only problem is I got a lot going on this week. So we'll see. But Monday is the goal. Get it delivered to him on Monday and it's out of here. Next time I want to see it, we'll do the oil change. Drive it and then I'll put it away for winter once it starts snowing. But worry about that when we get that far. And then... uh. It'll be neat having an empty spot in here. Model A don't take up much room. So we'll uh, think once the Buick is gone, the plan is to uh, I gotta clean this place. This place is a disaster. I mean, there's, it's just bad. <laughs> but we'll get the Model A stuck over here in the working bay, and uh, we'll do it to it. Make a list of parts I need, and I think I've come to the conclusion 
I'm probably going to buy a frame for the Model A. I know I was toying with the idea of making one. And, you know, I came really close to actually doing it, I think. But in terms of just having this car done in a timely fashion and not, you know, spending a month trying to make a frame, I think I'm just going to buy one. The company is right up the road here that makes them. They're not that expensive. And with the money I made for Jefferson and uh, some other ventures going on this past summer, I've been saving up, and I should be easily can afford the frame, the front axle, and the suspension, and all that stuff. The only thing I don't have is a rear axle yet, and I'm not too concerned. The other dilemma of this whole thing is the Buick. And this was the chosen power plant. The only problem is the more research I do, the more expensive it gets. By the time I buy the adapter plate and the flywheel and the starter and everything so I can make it so I can bolt the GM four speed behind it. Even if I wanted to do automatic, it's still you get buy all that fun stuff. Not cheap. Intake manifold, being it's a 364, it's the most bizarre nail head there is. Finding a four barrel intake is next to impossible. And then uh yeah, I could go tricarb. But there again, we're looking at $1,000 for that, or more. And we haven't even broke into the motor yet and see if it needs to be rebuilt. And if it needs to be rebuilt, well, that's, you know, pistons and all. Just the rebuild kit for the Buick isn't cheap, plus machine work. So that's an awfully expensive power plant for really nothing. I mean, it's cool. That's all we're going here for is the cool factor. Or as... You know, I can build a small block Chevy for a quarter of that. It'll probably be way more reliable. <laughs> if it breaks down somewhere, I can probably walk into a parts store and get parts for it. Yeah, I know I'm not supposed to put a small block in it, but he did kind of hint when we were at Simcoe that he would kind of let up on that. <laughs> so, I don't know. If I do go small block, now it's what do you build? 350, yeah, it'd be, you know, cool, cheapest. I just love the heck of my 283 and my 40 Chevy. So I thought about building another 283. I got a couple more blocks. Actually, I got like four more blocks. So I could easily do another 283. I mean, 350s are easy. I got, I got them everywhere. Then I thought 327, because believe it or not, I've never owned a 327. Pretty much owned every other small block configuration known to man, but I've never owned a 327. So I thought about that. 327, tricarb, four speed. I think that'd be kind of fun. Obviously, we gotta dress it up so it looks old. So you know, make it look vintage. So no modern billet, nothing fancy like that, just old school, because I don't want no trouble going into car shows with this car. This one's got to be period perfect. But that's the plan. We'll see. All right, that was my quick little shop update. I see it's almost nine minutes, so it's not very quick. So that's it. Later.